Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be changing the heatsink for this Nerd QX++. So in the last video, I believe that we kind of went over this, but if we open this up here, this is going to be this heatsink basically, but a copper version of it and a little bit larger. So we're going to be replacing it and then we're going to be showing you guys kind of the difference that it makes as well. So let's open this up here. You just have a bunch of things. I believe that this is to mount it. And then let's open this up as well. Take this off so you can see that in here. So as you can see, a lot bigger than the heatsink that we have here. If you just compare the thickness right there, um, let's put it that way. So this is like a kind of ultra light version and this is like the heavy version. I don't know how it's going to fare in terms of the actual board because clearly there is some adjustments that need to be made for the board. And it might and it also might be too heavy and that's the reason that they didn't use it, but today we're just going to be trying it out. So let's get it open. You can see the same sort of thing that we have here. So copper, just going to take this ceiling off. And I don't believe that you need any of those connectors that they showed here. But you can see it's basically the same size. If we grab it here, you can see it fits perfectly on top of there. And then you can kind of do all the testing out after the fact. So let's actually take this off. Now these use different bolts. So this is a, uh, a hex nut bolt or whatever, but it's springed in. So we need to be careful when taking these out. Let's bring that back here. Just put this down for a second because you don't want to put too much pressure on the board. So I'm going to do it diagonally so we don't do too much there. So it's taken that out and then there. So they have spaces in between them on the other side, but we'll show you when we've actually taken it apart. So, and again, you don't really need these to be too tight, I don't believe, because they uh, are covering kind of four of them and it doesn't need to be as tight as the bit axe one. You want to give a little bit of space as well for the chips as well. But we'll show you underneath now just the last one. I want to be very careful because you don't want to damage the chips underneath. And it's a very expensive piece of hardware that this is right here. So that is it right there. We don't want to get any thermal paste on. Spaces are flying all over the place right now. So there's one there, there's one there, and then there's two on here. So you can kind of see there. We need to actually unplug the fan. We forgot to do that. Let's actually grab it now. So just making sure that there's no thermal paste on anything. So this is a lot cleaner than what we see for the bit axe in terms of the chips, but you can see that this is basically the same architecture, just a thicker heatsink and copper. I don't know if this is adenized copper, so uh, it's turned silver. I believe that's the word for it, but if not, correct me in the comments. But the heatsink that we got is a little bit thicker, so maybe it'll look a little bit better and dissipate a little bit more heat. I know it is kind of overkill, but let's just put that to the side there and We'll see what this comes with. I'm hoping it comes with thermal paste. If not, we do have a backup. So this comes with a lot more pieces. So it does come with thermal paste right there. And then it comes with all of the spring pieces kind of that you see. I think we'll just recycle the ones that we have here because they seem to do a fine job. And um, we won't use any of these. But the thermal paste is nice to have as well. So let's actually use that instead of, I think we have some MX4 somewhere, but 
we're going to be using this one, I guess. So we need to clean this off. So we're just going to go do that real quick because, you know, it might take a while to clean it off, but then we'll come back and we'll get into actually repasting it and putting this on. So I actually also like the fact that this is a copper styled fan as well. And uh, yeah, let's take this off and then see the chips underneath. So as you can see underneath here, you can see the chips. So we have four BM137s, uh, .bc or .bc, I don't know what it is. And it's in this configuration where it's like these two and then it's these two backwards. So if we flip this around here, you can see, um, is it gonna focus right there? So that's a uh, pretty easy actual clean. Now, obviously the thermal paste is a little bit, you know, still stuck on there. There's no point really cleaning it at this point because you might be doing other upgrades as well. So let's just put the thermal paste on and then we'll get on to doing the other little bits. So I'm just gonna go kind of with the same thing that we do with the bit axe and just put a blob down there as well. And on each of them, um, we'll kind of mirror what we see here on this heatsink, and that's about as much. And there's still some thermal paste underneath, but I don't really think that it matters too much. The main thing that we're gonna have to do is actually space this out. So the configuration that it was in, sorry, I wasn't even showing it. The configuration that it was in needs to be this way, because I don't believe that it fits that way. So also the copper pipes are running a different way to the chips. So you need to make sure that that's also the same as well. So let's just go in with the thermal paste here. I'm just gonna, so that's how much we are gonna go with, if you can see it right there. I think that's even a little bit too much, but we'll just see how it goes. And now for the next part, let's actually put this on. So let's bring it out and put it into one time zoom there. We want the fan to come around at this angle. So if we move that there, fan is gonna come around at that angle and we need, so I think the fan is actually kept in place so it doesn't really matter which way we do it, we just need to get the right orientation. So it's gonna be like this, I believe. So let's actually do it like that. And then we need to put the spaces in. So that's gonna be the alignment that we get right there. And that I think should be pretty much it on replacing that. I obviously don't know how they did it in the factory, but we are gonna kind of emulate what they did. So put the spacer back in there and then put that back on there. One, two, yeah, we need to put that. Oh, the spacer goes first and then the little washer. So right there, same thing, just flip them around. And this is kind of like, probably gonna be the hardest part of doing this, is lining this all up without the spacers moving. So hopefully they don't move too much. So now is the final moment. We want to turn this over and basically line it up. Kinda of gonna do this out of camera. So I have lost the spacer, so we're gonna to have to redo this again. And just take it off. So that didn't leave too much thermal paste. I'm sure it's gonna be in the same place. So we are going to just kind of do this off camera because I feel like it's way harder to line it up whilst it's on camera like that. So let's do it off camera and then we'll get back and show you the finished product when we've actually sorted it out, because I might need to do this a couple of times before I get it right. So we'll be back after we've completed it. So we have actually got it completed here, as you can see. And the thing that we needed to change, actually, it did take a while to get this on, but you can see it's a lot thicker on the back by here. And it actually looks really good. Like just 
like this. But one thing that we needed to change was these. So if you look here, this was what was on the original one. If we, oh, hold on, let's grab it back up here. On the original one, it was sticking out a little bit. So these holes didn't actually line up. And so what that meant is that we needed to replace these with these ones that came in there. So in this whole box of things, it actually came with the replaceable ones, which you see on the original heatsink that we have here. And we just replaced them, put them on the bottom and lined up the screws a little bit, did some repasting of the thermal and it looks to be okay. So we have already tested it and plugged it in, but we are going to go over and do some comparisons on the heat. But I will plug it in for you right now, right here, just to show you that it does turn on. So we have it just standing up right there. And if we press that down into there, make sure it's down in there, it starts up right there. So let's take it actually over to the computer and we'll do some testing and comparison of, you know, with this heatsink and without that heatsink. Also, we're going to be adding these copper things to the uh, VR. So the voltage regulator right there and then some to the back as well. But we'll do the testing first and then we'll go and put these on and test that afterwards. So let's get over to the computer now. So after leaving this run for a little bit, as you can see here, we have a bunch of steady hash rate. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a comparison to what we saw kind of yesterday when we were doing the overclocking. I think it was a couple of videos ago, but it might have been the last video that we did with the overclocking. And mainly we're just going to be going through kind of the power, the ASIC temperature, the RPM, VR temps, and I don't really think the input voltage is going to be changed. As I said, I didn't want to put the copper VR temperature things on there quite yet, just because I wanted to see, you know, how much that this heat sink was actually affecting the VR temperatures. And after looking at it or looking at the results, so we're going to be going based off this video that we did the overclock testing on. First thing that I notice is the power. So we have 81.3 watts there. And then we go back, it's only at 78.1 or around that. That makes me think that it's pulling less on the fan. And that's mainly where the wattage difference is coming from because it's not exactly negligible. And when we actually go over to the fan part of it, you'll see that kind of now. So we have obviously the same overclocks. I just want to mention that as well. Same overclocks with their default ones and they're sitting at 600 and 1.15. ASIC temperature on the actual chips is 45.8 and that's been pretty steady and in the video that we did the overclock remember this is also on the standard overclocks the ASIC temperature was 48.6 so you've got around three degrees difference there just based off of that the VR temperature that you'll notice as well is at 60 degrees here however it's actually at around 62 here the reason for this, I believe, is because the actual heatsink is bigger and the heat coming off it is actually flowing upwards because heat is rising from the heatsink up to the VR modules that you have there. So that's increasing the heat of them just a little bit. But overall, the chip temperature is actually lower, but VR temperatures are actually going up. And then as we were mentioning with the power, this is coming into the fan speed as well. So fan speed is only at 37. Remember that is PMW controlled. So it's controlling it to an ASIC chip temperature. And the RPM is around 1100. But down here, as you can see, if you can kind of see that it's 46 on the percentage and 1360. So that's the reason that the power is slightly lower, I believe, is because the fan speed isn't as much. So there's not as much power going through the fan to actually power this to cool it down. And we still have a lower ASIC temperature. And I'm assuming when we get into kind of overclocking territory, that is really going to pick up and the difference is going to show massively. Obviously, the difference is also going to show on the voltage regulator. So we're going to have to put copper heat sinks on them and probably some on the back to counteract all the heat that's coming off. 
the actual bigger heatsink that we're using. So our hash rate's sitting around 5,290, kind of average, I would say, it's been up and down, but average is 4.8, 4.9. So kind of what expected is here. The efficiency is actually way better, and that is due to the power dropping off and the fans having to spin around less. So you have an efficiency which is kind of close to the regular Bitmain S21s. But here you have our efficiency at 16.68. So it's kind of a little bit worse. Now, am I saying it's worth it kind of to buy this one? Not necessarily, because the other one works perfectly fine. This one, I think, is a negligible upgrade for the amount that it actually costs. But if you start to overclock it, I'm sure that's going to come through. And the gap between the amount of heat dissipation is going to show a little bit more. Remember, they both have the same fans, and those can only run up to a certain RPM. So you're only going to be able to take away a certain amount of heat from the actual heatsink. But this one was copper. I don't know if the other one is still copper, but it's just turned silver. Let me know in the comments if that is the case. But if not, that one must be aluminium, and this one is fully copper. So I'm assuming that the temperatures would be a little bit better. So as I said, it has improved the efficiency. The ASIC temperatures are down just a little bit. The power is down, fan speed is down. The only downside is that the voltage regulator temperatures are going up. Now I will do some tests and kind of get back to you to see if when we add heat sinks to the voltage regulator, if that actually brings it down a lot more than what we're seeing here. Because mainly when we were using the Supras or the Gammas, the actual main bottleneck was always the VR temperature because that was climbing way too quickly and we couldn't overclock the chip fast enough before that kind of maxed out at around 90 degrees. So it is important to keep an eye on the VR temperatures and make sure that they don't go above a certain amount. And as you overclock, obviously they're going to get hotter as well. So overall, I think it was definitely a good upgrade. And we'll see a little bit more when I start to overclock it, which we'll do some testing in the background and come back with some results. But mainly, I don't think it's worth it to buy it. I'm kind of buying it just for an aesthetic purpose at this point. It's kind of a minor upgrade, I'd say, but it looks a lot better, in my opinion. As I said, the original heatsink is fine. Also, if you want to get one of these, there is a link in the description. You can get 10% off the Nerd QX++ from Power Mining, so you can check that in the first link in the description. So make sure you like the video and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this upgrade and I'll see you in the next video.